Hello and welcome to this week's Wellness, Wealth and Mindset Weekly lessons and experiences from our past week. So without a shadow of a doubt, let's get stuck in. Health wise, over the last week, I've been really prioritising sleep and off the back of quite a heavy weekend cycling back down in Devon, my training has also taken a bit more of a rephase when it comes to training as well and that's just building back up again in the second week. But I want to talk to you a little bit about sleep and how so many people I speak to on a daily basis when assessing their health really struggle or don't prioritise sleep as much as they should do. Most people tend to always get up at the same time, but most of the time when I ask them how much sleep they're getting and they're struggling to get the seven to nine hours that's recommended, most of the time is that they need to be going to bed a bit early and often often staying up a little bit too late, maybe on TV, on their phone or just relaxing post putting their children to bed. So I think it's really vital that you do prioritise going to bed at the same time as you do prioritise getting up at the same time. Alarms to wake ourselves up, but we don't set alarms to go to bed. And sleep is one of the key factors when it comes to managing your weight, managing your energy levels throughout the day. And if you are lacking in sleep, then you are really going to struggle on a day-to-day basis. There's recent studies that have come out that even one hour or two less sleep per night over the course of a year can be the equivalent of you being a night shift worker. And in doing so, when you have less sleep, the appetite hormone, I think it's ghrelin, goes up. So you increase your appetites, you're more likely to overeat and snack in order to provide you from some energy throughout the day. Also, obviously, if you're tired, you have less motivation or less willpower or discipline maybe to get and do a bit of a workout. So the cycle continues where you feel tired, you have some more food to increase that energy. And then that cycle continues where that drop in energy comes from a spike in glucose. Often when we have a snack, it's more of a sugary snack as opposed to anything as healthy as we could choose. And then we become tired again. So if you are struggling with any of those elements when it comes to being more active in terms of being a healthy, healthier weight and stacking less, then really prioritize focusing on your sleep. And one of the key things that I've been doing over the last two weeks and what we've been doing a lot in recent months as well is phone off at least an hour or two before bed, a bit of yoga and meditation before bed. And that could be a little 10 minute stretching routine with my partner, make sure all the lights are quite dim. So there's very little sunlight in the apartment or lights available. So obviously you're just allowing your body to switch off. And on top of that, a nice hot shower. And research again, by having a warm shower, that increases your body temperature on the outside, but naturally your core body temperature will start to ease because it wants to try and bring it back down to a nice stable temperature ready for sleep. And in doing so, that allows you to get off to sleep a bit easier. It's just showing that it allows us to be more relaxed when it comes to going to bed. And because our body temperature is naturally trying to cool itself, that in itself will help to kind of ease ourselves into sleep as to the opposite way around if we're too hot with our core to- core body temperature, we tend to be more restless. So these key strategies are really helpful in terms of, for me at any rate, getting to sleep a lot easier and making sure I prioritize at least seven to nine hours of, of sleep a night ready most of the time go to bed for half eight waking up at half past four so that's giving me a good eight hours of sleep and over recent weeks i'm hardly even waking up in the night and sleeping right the way through so i'm feeling really good feeling energized because my sleep is good and because of that routine that me and my partner do in the evenings yoga maybe five ten minutes of meditation hot shower unwinding with no screen time maybe reading a little book before bed but very little screen time. Even for me, sometimes when I finish work at five, I'm turning my phone off within an hour or so later. So that's a wait for the rest of the day. And in doing so, I can fall asleep really quickly. You know, ideally want to be falling asleep within 15 minutes of turning the lights off and sleeping through the night. From time to time, I'll still get up, go for a wee. I might be disturbed in the night. I think if that happens to you, try not to overstress about that. I think that's normal. And just remember that you've got more time to go to sleep. So try not to overthink things 
and hopefully that will get you back to sleep if you are a bit restless throughout the night. But maybe follow those three tips if you are struggling with your sleep and see how that will improve your energy levels throughout the day to be more active and also improve your food choices as well because you're less hungry because obviously you've got a good night's sleep. So hopefully the tips that I've been following over many months and over the last few weeks prioritizing my recovery when it comes to sleep will help you in terms of improving those areas as well for you. Wealth-wise, it's been a really interesting week within the world of wealth for me personally and just interesting to talk about certain aspects when I see what's going on in society and sharing some thoughts that I have myself on wealth within the economy and how it impacts individuals and there's a I feel there's a real sense of entitlement to the government giving us money as opposed to us going out and working for it and I've been having conversations with my family and other people within my life about experiences they had maybe growing up and having children back in the 80s and during that period of time my mum for example when she had my brother and sister before they had me there's very little support when it comes to child maintenance or child support from the government to support you with the upbringing of your child you had to do that all yourself and she my mum ended up being a childminder so then she could look after her kids but also earn some money by looking over after other children as well but still spending time with her own children and you know really really honor of her to do so fantastic way seeing her family and supporting the family as well financially but i see more and more obviously families want to go out and work and more people are more career minded and more career driven when it comes to both females and males in this economy which is fantastic but at the same time we feel almost entitlement that we we have children that we should have the government looking after us based on the choices that you make as opposed to the choices that you make financially first before you have children i can't say i don't have any children at the moment so i understand i'm looking at it from one side of the fence and this is just a dialogue and a conversation that i wanted to kind of open up within the podcast and within today's episode so if you feel you got any comments or questions about this let me know in the comments below to this episode really know love to know your thoughts and perspective on this i'm not certainly saying i'm right or wrong it's just an observation that i've seen within society where a lot of us a lot of people maybe feel entitled without having to pay their way and for whatever reason they feel someone else will pay their way or support them and i've grown up in a in a household where i've always been forced to work and support myself and because of that mentality i've never really asked for any handouts certainly obviously everybody got supported a little bit through covid which is obviously a very different experience to just general day to day living but still going out and working and earning and providing for yourself during that period of time if that was possible and that was for me so i worked all the way through covid doing multiple jobs in order to support myself as well so let me know your thoughts please because i'm really interested to know do you rely or do you see that the government should support you more when it comes to your finances? And I think obviously that is the case certainly in other aspects of the economy. And I'm not talking about that today because it's a massive conversation that you could really go off on many tangents to talk about. But in regards to just maybe childcare or supporting yourself financially or in certain aspects, do you feel the government should be paying you more money to support you? Or do you feel you should maybe spend more money on yourself supporting yourself to level up to increase your earning potential there's two ways of looking at it is it better for you to go out and earn more money and that obviously is in terms of how much you can earn potentially or should we sitting back and expecting a little bit more handouts from someone in order to support us and i said like i said i'm not talking about the economy at the moment in terms of prices with companies earning profits which certainly should be balanced out people don't why do companies need to earn billions when we all want to have a happy life and spread their wealth equally throughout the planet? But it's another topic for another day. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. I'm really interested to know that just because I feel we should be actively looking after ourselves first and then anything on top is a bonus as opposed to expecting someone else to look after ourselves first and then us supporting that in the avoid round. So let me know your thoughts. That's my thoughts on wealth this week and let to know your thoughts too so please post them in the comments to this video or hit me up 
on Instagram if you've got any thoughts you'd like to share. And finally, mindset wise, really interesting viewpoint about ourselves as victim. I've seen around us a lot of time, we can easily play the victim or play the card where we feel a certain situation or a certain experience is unfair on us. However, that remember, it's just a story you have in your head about the things you might be experiencing personally. And obviously certain factors within your life have shaped those experiences. So can you, or is there ways that you can reshape that narrative that you have in your mind and not always be a victim? Because certainly most of the things that we tend to get stressed about and over maybe think aren't really going to matter in the grand scheme of things. We're all going to pass on in a hundred years time. No one will know I existed. So understanding your perspective on how you view yourself and your world externally through the eyes you see life and the story you've experienced and the experiences you had through life maybe are something that you need to reevaluate if you're always playing the victim in certain aspects of your life you always feel someone's not fair because of this or because of that or whatever it might be there's multiple ways that you could feel like you might be a victim in certain ways but maybe understanding why and going more deeper within yourself to understand that and uncover that is a really, really valuable tool, I feel, when it comes to understanding your mindset and just reviewing and experiencing things around me is a really interesting viewpoint in terms of how I maybe view certain aspects of people's behavior. And I think the more we can individually work on ourselves in a mindful way in terms of understanding our own story, how we view the world and how it shapes our identity and our behavior, the more we can help others to improve their narrative, also improve the environment that we are actually experiencing. We'll have a nicer environment. We might always feel that actually the narrative is not fair on us. If you're late for work, for example, you could say life's not fair because the bus was late, but actually you were probably late in terms of getting the right bus at the right time. And if you made the right choices earlier, it would have been earlier and accounted for those things that you have very little control over so instead of blaming something that you have no control over take responsibility for your own actions find out those creases and remove those opportunities that might create those problems in your day before they even occur so i think that's the what i wanted to talk about today when it comes to mindset and just things that i've been experiencing within my own environment in terms of how we maybe can review our story and take a little bit step a step back from time to time to understand how we react to certain things based on our experiences before because a lot of time we're only reacting based on our own experiences from the past or similar experiences we might have had at the time and those experiences can be shaped and changed differently everybody will see a different situation through different viewpoints through different eyes through different experiences and maybe having more of a dialogue and a conversation to open up your mind to understand both sides of the story is the way forward as opposed to one person being right one person being wrong or vice versa so that's just my thoughts for today when it comes to mindset and that's my wellness wealth and mindset weekly for this week hope you enjoyed the show if you've got any comments or questions based on what i've discussed today feel free to post them in the comments below to this video over on youtube if you want to hit me up if you're listening on the podcast head over to youtube to pop in any comments or send me a direct message with any of your thoughts on Instagram as well. And obviously, if you want to subscribe to get this as new in newsletter form directly to your inbox every Friday, then also subscribe with the links in the description to the show as always. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you again next week.